Today, I want to talk about Hollywood, the story. Now, this is a part of the series of me getting the chance to talk about craft whiskey that you're not going to be able to get, most likely. But I love this resource and this channel still being something that highlights and promotes interesting craft whiskey around the world. And this is uh, a really cool one. This is a bottle from Jake Clements, the founder of the Texas Whiskey Festival, current director of the Texas Whiskey Association, Whiskey Sommelier, and he went to Scotland last year and he brought back this bottle and he said, hey, I wanna donate this to the vault. And I went, holy crap, man. Here's what I know about Holyrood. They're in Edinburgh and they are maybe one of the more weirdly creative, interesting, experimental distilleries in all of Scotland right now. They're true craft. This release is like 8,000 bottles, which sounds like a lot, but that's not a lot when it comes to the big players in the whiskey industry. I've been following along at Hollywood because it's a whole bunch of nerds, and every time I see them, they're a part of some documentary about making this historical recipe, or they're a part of some expose or magazine article about using weird yeast and new styles of heirloom barley, and they're just our kind of nerd people. This specifically, ooh, Okay, man, it does smell young and a little punchy and a little appley, but this specifically is their inaugural release. This is batch one, release one, bottled in 2023 of their own uh, barley, their own malt. And I got notes here because I, here's how hardcore they are. They list the maltster, the type of malt, the yeast styles, original gravity and final gravity of the fermentations, how long the fermentation went, what the ABV of the ending fermentation was, and then the maturation. So this is a uh, crisp maltster. This is scotch pot still malt. This is yeast DY379. Again, it's insane. I'm gonna put all these details down in the description of this video because it's, it's a lot. But the maturation is Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez, um, bourbon and rum brick casks. So this is a mix of four different styles of barrel aging. And I don't know how old it is. I asked Jake, he hadn't gotten back to me yet, but it's old enough to be called scotch, which means it's, it's at least three. Mm. And it actually, man, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but it actually jumps out to me closer to a really elaborate Irish pot still than a, a, what I'm used to with classic Scottish malt. Oh man, I can't believe I said that out loud. Okay. But there's this explosion of citrus and fruit and caramel, vanilla. There's honeysuckle. And then there's a lot of like pear and orchard and stone fruit. Man, this is a fruit explosion. And I feel like, even though that's four different kinds of barrel aging, maybe it's in my head, but I feel like the malt is really forward on this. That most of the things I'm getting are malt fermentation notes accented by the barrel aging. There's no real earth. There's a little bit of funky malt mustiness that you get from barley. Oh, and it's really kind of soft and creamy on the nose. Uh, Oh, man. Ah, there it is. Okay. So one of the things I always get in slightly younger malts is that um, there's a lot of these sort of like spicy, zesty notes all over the place in the palate. Instead of getting those like really long, smooth oxidation kind of soft mouthfeel kinds of things, you get this youthful, a little bit spiky, a little bit peppery, a little bit zesty notes to it, even though I don't think it's actually uh, uh, peated or anything. Um, and it's 46%, 46.1, which is not an astronomically high proof, but it, it drinks very sparkly and effervescent and, I mean, crap, almost carbonated. Mm. I would say it's got a very honeyed finish, but it, it's a really short finish and then it sort of lingers for a little bit, and then all that's left behind is this little bit of this oily sweetness, but it's not this like really long, heavy, dense finish. And, hmm, okay. I'm gonna get some water to add to this, and I'm not 
I'm not normally gonna use this, <laughs> but when I was cleaning the vault the other day, I discovered that I had these bottled water from Speyside, Glenlivet in Scotland that someone sent and just mineral water from the Speyside region in the Glenlivet area. And so why not water down scotch with scotch water? Because nerd alert. Uh, so just as a reminder, we started adding these back. We're doing two kinds of reviews. One where it's just craft whiskey that I wanted to highlight, but the brand has no idea that I intended to talk about this and they didn't ask for it and they're not getting anything out of it. This is either I got it or uh, one of the friends of the community gave us the bottle. And this was just an opportunity to get to kind of try it together and highlight it and show you guys what's cool. I'm also going to be doing ones of bottles that get mailed in to me unsolicited. Like I don't ask for them, they just brand send them. And most of them are kind of like, meh. Like, oh, the next release of a Heaven Hill product that has already been out for ages. This is just this year's bottling. That to me, not that interesting. But I do have some releases that were sent to me that are actually very interesting. And those I'm going to sort of impromptu with no research, unbox and try with you. Uh, and you'll see that style of review next. But this is our series that we're gonna call, I guess, Rare Whiskey. Now remember we had Rare Whiskey Friday? We're still trying to figure out what we're gonna call these things. And I have already put up a poll in the community gathering questions. If, if by the time this video is shot, we get our name from there, you're gonna see that name in the headline. Otherwise, we're gonna be trying out titles until we find something that we really love. So I let this sit for a little bit. It's got some water in it. It probably brought it down to around 40 would be my guess. Ooh, okay, and now, way more dried grass, herbal, earthy, but still dominated by those really fruity notes, but now it smells more like greenhouse fruit orchards. Mm. Ah, and the palate vanished. It's soft, it's sweet, it's malty, it's a little simple. It was way better before I added water. Duly noted. So I don't know if you can get this one, but if you can, it's worth it even if it's just as an exploration of what's cool and new in the craft Scottish whiskey scene. It's not gonna dethrone any of my favorite scotches yet, but I just, I love everything about their, the approach they're taking. And the next time I'm in Edinburgh, I can't wait to uh, go get to try it out in person. Um, if I was comparing this now, I would say that this is closer to like a Glenlivet than a Glenfiddich and, or maybe not quite monkey shoulder because it's not quite as softened out and malty funk but like with a fruit bomb. So imagine those things, but just super fruit forward, not as orange direction citrus as Glenmorangie, way more organic and for lack of a better word. And yeah, but very interesting. So cheers to you. Welcome to a whole new level of exploring things. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here. Hmm.